Hi there, this is Ajit here. I'm going to talk about the role of a reference story in agile estimation. What is a reference story? A reference story is one of the simple story in the product backlog which is estimated very first time by the scrum team and assign a story point so that this story can be used to estimate rest of the stories in the backlog. This session is particularly useful for those who are coming from traditional mindset of absolute estimation which is where they have been estimating the software in terms of hours, days, months and now been asked to do relative estimation or story point estimation as part of agile implementation. Before we dwell into the reference story and the estimation process around it, let's understand what is a story point. A story point is a number which is assigned to a story to estimate it. And these numbers are taken from the Fibonacci series because stories have to be estimated relatively. As you can see, in the Fibonacci series, which are written down here, a number is sum of the previous two number. So that way, these numbers are forming some relationship between them. And this relationship is very important when it comes to estimating the stories. Now the question comes, what are the criteria based on which a story is assigned a higher story point or a lower story point? There are three criteria. Complexity of the logic and architecture. Any gaps, risk, issues, open questions, more open questions, more uncertainty, story is going to attract higher story point. Amount of work or size, number of text boxes, drop down, check boxes, calls to APIs is, is going to decide its size. Put together decides the story point of the story. But remember, there is always a trade off between complexity and the amount of work. There may be a story which is having just three text boxes. But then the logic it is processing is very complex. In that case, that story is going to attract a higher story point. Alternatively, there may be a story which is having say 10 text boxes, 5 drop downs, couple of calls to the APIs. But then the logic it is using is very simple. In that case, this story is going to attract a lower story point comparing to that story. Let's get back to the reference story now. In the ideal world, a simple story is picked up as a reference story and is assigned a small number from the Fibonacci series. That number normally is 3. And then we ask Scrum team to start comparing rest of the stories in the backlog with the reference story based on these three criteria and see if those stories attract a higher story point or a lower story point and then continue the estimation journey. It looks very straightforward very smooth but in the real world things are not that easy people literally freak out especially those coming from the traditional mindset of estimation they do struggle even after a couple of sprints they are not able to settle down so they are always looking at the scrum master and agile coach for the help for situations like this there's a technique which can help them easily transition from their hourly mindset of estimation to the story point estimation and i'm going to talk about such technique by giving an example here. This is a simple story which can be taken up as a reference story. It reads, given a new bank customer when opens an account, then details are entered in the system. Now we can visualize this story as a entry form like this, which is having customer first name, customer last name, address, date of birth, age, mobile and few other fields. Now this story will be worked out by a cross-functional team which consists of a UI developer, Java server-side developer, a DBA and a tester. As a scrum master, I am going to ask this team what do they think is the end-to-end -end estimate of this story so that this story can be delivered in the sprint. Meaning everyone in the team has to tell the total efforts that this story is going to take which includes the efforts of the development, testing, DBA work or anything else. Now UI developer may say that the end-to-end -end estimate of this story is 30 hours. Java server side may say 35. DBA who is not very close enough to the end-to-end -end functionality may give some number less or more. Say he is giving 25 hours. Testers giving 30 hours. Now the close enough estimate which can be agreed by the team is 30 hours. Next I am going to do is 
draw this table which has hours mapped to the story points 20 hours to 2 story point 30 to 3 50 to 5 80 to 8 these numbers comes from based on our prior experience of the projects and something that the agile coe might have recommended so it all depends from project to project setup to setup organization to organization i'll pick up these 30 hours from here go to this table and see what is the story point it is attracting a story point of 3 so 3 becomes the story point of my reference story now there may be a case where ui developer says that instead of 30 hours the end to end estimate of the story is going to be 50 hours server side saying 55 db is saying 40 and tester saying say 52 the close enough estimate which can be agreed by the team is 50 hours. I'll take these 50 hours from here to this table and see what is the story point it is attracting. Story point of 5. So 5 becomes the story point of the reference story in that case. Now whatever the estimate I given here, they are close enough estimates which team can easily agree. There may be a case where team is giving some random numbers or some outliers which need to be agreed upon. For example, UI team saying that the end-to-end -end estimate for this story is 60 hours, server side saying 50, DB is saying 30 hours and tester saying 45. Now there are clearly two outliers, one is 60, another is 30. The scrum master is going to talk to these guys, why do they think it is going to take 60 or 30? So they will explain their positions, there will be another round of brainstorming between the team and they will agree some consensus being made between them for an estimate. That estimate can be taken up to this story to decide the story point for the reference story. Once we decided a story point for the reference story, we are going to cancel out this table, we are not going to use it any further. To keep it simple and for the purpose of our example, let's assume the team has agreed a story point of 3 for this story. So let's make it 3 and see some examples. Let's say the next story in the backlog is this login story which is having two text boxes and a simple logic of authenticating the user. This story based on three criteria when compared to the reference story is certainly going to attract a less story point, a story point of 2. Now this is a story which is having a search functionality. This story is having some search criteria like customer first name, last name, date of birth and age based on which a grid is populated. This grid is having two scroll bars. One is horizontal and another is vertical. Any click on the scroll bar is going to process some buffering logic and pull the data in. This story when compared to reference story on these three criteria is certainly going to attract a higher story point, a story point of 5. Now there may be a story which is falling between these two story, a story which is more complex than the reference story and less complex than this story. In that case we will assign story point of 5 to that story and the search functionality story is going to attract story point of 8. Whatever the stories I discussed here, they are more or less simple stories. There may be a story which is a complex story, a story which is making a call to the third party system, getting the data from there, coming back to our system and processing the logic. In that case, this story is going to assign story point of 13. And there may be stories which are more complex and much bigger than all these stories we talked about. In that case, these stories will be assigned a story point of 21. 34 and uh, even more but team need to understand that these stories are epic stories which need to be broken down into smaller stories even in some case a story point of 13 may be on the higher side and team may think that this story cannot be delivered in the sprint in that case they need to talk to the scrum master and agile coach to find some splitting technique so that this story can be broken down into smaller stories and can be delivered in the sprint what is the highest story point beyond which the story should be split? It, it all depends. It depends on the agile delivery model and the duration of the sprint. So that's all about 
the reference story and the process of estimation around it, I just mentioned one technique which can help people easily learn on the story point estimation method. Thanks for watching this video. Let me know your questions or feedback. Stay tuned.